This is Carl at National RV Detroit, and I'm going to walk you through this 2021 Zinger Model 331BH, as in bunkhouse. Okay. So let's check out the outside kitchen back here, this area anyway. Okay. So, first thing to know is for this. Let me make sure I've got this. Okay, so for your for your cooktop, um, it has to be plugged in. I'm talking about the LP has to be plugged in. So you got this quick connect fitting right here, and um, that will connect right here to this LP fitting down here, this female fitting. So you connect to that, and then it'll draw right from your LP tanks. Okay. Also, keep in mind that there's a a sh if you look through this hole, there's a shaft with a pin going through it. That's that's to crack crank the slide room uh, manually if you have to. You can always get it in or out, even if you have an accident or a failure, it's damaged or whatever. You can always get yourself out of trouble. And let's see here. There's another one right here for the main slide room on the other side. Okay. Um, also, you have power stabilizers, so um, basically one switch operates both rear and then the other switch up front operates both front. Um, you don't lift the trailer with it, you just take the, take the wiggle out of it, so that's all you do with it. Um, Alright, so you got two, two toilets in this one, one right here, and then there's a, the other one up front. Uh, so there's going to be two separate black tanks on this one, okay, and two separate black tank flushes. Now this black tank flush right here, I'm sure it's for the, this, uh, this toilet right here. Uh, so keep in mind after you dump the, uh, the black tank, you can hook your hose of the dump station onto here. Always make sure that the valve is open, turn it on and it'll spray out the inside of your tank and clean it out, okay. Um, so there's going to be another one for the other tank also, we'll find that. It's probably on the other side, maybe. Okay, so you have outside speakers, uh, power awning with an LED strip. This is the vent for your range hood. So if you want to vent to the outside, let's say you're going to use the range hood fan, you just open this up here, there's two little tabs here, so the baffle inside will flap freely. So you want it flapping freely when you're venting, but uh, when you're traveling or in storage, that sort of thing, you want it you want it shut, so you want to fasten those latches if you're not venting to the outside. Your steps fold into the trailer. You can adjust the length of the legs by pulling this pin. There's one on each side. You can adjust the length of the legs accordingly. All right. Let me look behind here. Okay. You got a TV hook up here. You got signal out and power. There's your front stabilizer jack switch. Now, with these stabilizers, I mentioned that you could, you could actually crank the uh, slide room in manually and out manually. Well, with these, if you come into the off-door side, the stabilizer racks, you can, you can crank these manually too. So, uh, keep in mind, you can always get yourself out of trouble. Plus, um, this power tongue jack right here. You can remove the cap here and crank this manually if you have to. That, that would be this small crank right here. Okay? Alright, so uh, you have two, you know, obviously a power tongue jack. You got two LP tanks which are full. You have an automatic changeover regulator. So just open both tanks and it'll automatically switch back and forth. Um, you've got a deep cycle marine battery with a, a kill switch right here so you can shut the battery off when you put it into storage. That way it won't drain down as quickly. Also, this, this little hookup right there is for a solar panel. If you want to get a, a solar battery charger, you can plug it in right there. Okay. So, these are your main bathroom dump valves here. You see you got your gray valve, which is sink and shower water, and your black valve, which is toilet water and waste. You always dump the black first and then use the gray to kind of wash it out. Then, this one also has another uh, flush here for this tank, black tank, so you can poke the hose up there. Excuse me, make sure that you left the, the black tank valve open, turn it on, it'll spray it out. Alright, 
Okay, this is your water heater on the outside. Yeah. Um, basically, this is in camping mode right now. It's it's all set, ready to go. Um, never ever start up your your water heater on gas or electric without water in the tank. You always make sure there's water in there. This is the drain plug right here, or drain cap right here. So the switches are inside. I'll show you those when we get in there. This is the city water hookup, the most common way to get water to the trailer. You just hook it up and you're all set. Now if you go to a campground that doesn't have plumbing on the campsites, you can pre-fill your fresh water tank here and use the onboard electric pump to pump the water. I'll show you the switch when we get inside. Okay? All right. So, this is the another, there's another shaft in there so you can crank the slide room on the other side manually if you have to. This is your these are your second black and gray tank here, the one in the back. Like I said, always dump the gray or the black first, then the gray. You've got a 30 amp, 30 foot power cord. Right there, it stores in the trailer, so you just push it in there and pull it out. This is just signal through, uh, campground cable and satellite, that sort of thing. This, this housing tells us we're pre-wired for a backup camera, so um, if you're interested, we do sell them here. Uh, basically you'll be able to see behind you when you're backing up or if you want to when you're backing down the road. Also while we're looking up, the manufacturer states that you should check the uh, check the roofing seals every 90 days or so. So you figure once in the spring, once in the middle of summer, once in the fall, go up there yourself or have somebody go up on the roof, look at all the seal and make sure there's no cracking or separation. Look at your vent covers and the roofing material to make sure it wasn't damaged by low branches, that sort of thing. Just inspect it. It's very important to do that. That way when you do have an issue, um, somewhere down the road, could be years, could be um, six months, you just don't know. So that's why you inspect it regularly. It's very important. And if you do see something, get it taken care of immediately. All right, let's go inside here. This device right here is the power converter. So this converts. AC to DC power, so you got 110 AC on this side, regular household type circuit breakers and they're labeled. Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC over here, you got 12 volt fuses and they're labeled. If any of the fuses were to blow, you'll actually be see it glowing through this tinted plastic here. And also keep in mind that these 240s are the masters, they protect the whole 12 volt side. So if you had a really wild power surge or a lightning strike to a power line or something like that, and the, and the um, DC side goes out, always check these 240s first because that's, 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 if it's working properly, that's what will pop, those one or both of those, okay? All right. Also, if you're, uh, as long as we're plugged into shore power, this is a, a, a battery charger, a battery tender, so it'll send so much energy your battery needs and send what it needs up there uh, if, it's, if, it's, if the batteries are, are or the battery's charged. It'll just uh, send a couple amps up there. If it's low, it'll send 10 or whatever it needs. Okay. All right, so this is your control panel right here. Power awning. Never leave the awning out unattended. Always roll it in if you're not going to be at the campsite. Uh, you have your three slider rooms here. Okay, lights here. Your water pump, if you're pumping your own water or winterizing the trailer, you use that. And um, if you want to light your water heater on gas, you do this. If you want, or I mean electric, you do this. If you want to light it on gas, you do that. Um, make sure there's always, make sure there's water in the tank. Um, and of course your levels, your battery's charged, fresh water's empty, black is empty, um, your gray one and two are empty. And let me, let me walk to the back to see if they've got another panel back there, or you use the auxiliary for your second black tank. Let me just look here real quick. dark here, get some light. Yeah, so it's going to be the, the auxiliary one will be your second black tank. Okay, that's good. Alright, so that's how you check all your levels. Now, of course, it, it, it the lights graduate up in one-third increments, and when you get past two-thirds, you got to start thinking about dumping your gray and black tank. Alright. This is to select between your fireplace or your air conditioner. You obviously can't run them both at the same time. So, um, we're in AC season right now, so it's shipped, switched to AC, but um, you can go back and forth. You have to manually select which one you're gonna use. 
your this is your thermostat it's just an analog thermostat try to keep it on the fan on auto right and then of course heats to the right all the way to the left is cool and then one click back is the fan the fan is just the air the air conditioner running without the compressor so it just circulates air table can be dropped down turn into a bed Let's see what we have here this is a jackknife sofa so it can be flattened out jackknifed into a bed so you got two beds in here um, your your fireplace let me turn it on here so I can show you so we're just gonna go like that it's got a remote control right here and switches right there so basically you have on and off of course now it's flashing H which means high that's the fan speed you can change it to off low and high right then also you have a thermostat in it um, you set that here like this goes up in five degree increments it looks like on this one yes okay you also could have changed the change the appearance of the fire the intensity that sort of thing and it has a timer on it so you can set it to turn on whenever you you want if you want it to come on if it's if it's getting cool outside and you, you want it turn it on to if you're gonna get oh, let me let me back up here I'm sorry if you want to set the timer so it so it turns on you know 20 minutes before you get out of bed in the morning you can do that that sort of thing all right so it does have a timer also hope that made sense to you this is the remote for your your sound bar here now you can stream off the USB here so you can take all your all your albums with you on one stick and uh, do it that way or you can hook up with Bluetooth from your phone or tablet so uh, you can also do that you have two speaker zones A and B A is inside the trailer B is outside of the trailer um, and the various different modes so you can you can do a lot you can you can run it right through your TV too once you get a TV here now a word about the TV bracket if you can it's uh, my opinion is it's better to spend a little extra money and get the, the bracket that locks into place when it's retracted right so it doesn't fly around otherwise you have to put a strap on it it's kind of unsightly it's a, just a pain so if you if when you're looking at brackets if you can find one that locks into place that's the way to go in my opinion all right so this is a 12 volt DC compressor refrigerator so you just set the temperature here you could see you had a day uh, a morning and an evening mode you know power saving mode that sort of thing um, your microwave works like any other microwave this is your range hood remember I told you the vent on the outside you want to open the baffle if you're venting like using the fan okay your range works on gas of course and you this is the sparker so you turn this clockwise to spark it so you just want to go to high now I just have turned it on there so it's a, it's it's sparked right there so I turned that clockwise to spark it now the oven is a little different if you look all the way to the back on the bottom there's a pilot light I'll spark it so you can see it sparking back there okay there's a pilot light so what you do is you go to the oven knob which is all the way over to the right you go to the picture of the pilot light and then depress it you keep it depressed during the whole lighting procedure then with the other hand you're going to spark this by turning it clockwise until the pilot light down there lights once it lights you still hold this in for another 10 seconds or so to heat it up then you go to operating temperature and it cycles like an oven does when you shut it off the flame goes out of course but so does the pilot light so you have to relight the pilot light each time you um, each time you use the oven Uh, one last thing here this is the carbon monoxide LP gas detector also if it beeps very slowly it's telling you your battery's low um, so I'm gonna set it through the self test so it'll first test for LP then carbon monoxide then it'll display four beeps for the for the low battery alarm here we go LP carbon monoxide coming up and then low battery And then it goes back to green. It should always be green, if not get it serviced. So if it goes off, if the regular alarm goes off, you take everybody outside, of course, leave the door open, shut the gas off at the front, and figure out what's going on. Just don't don't ignore it. Okay, so let's let's move toward the bunk room here. So you got three bunks in here. Um, this one folds down. Obviously, that one flips over into a bed, rolls over twice, I think, to turn into a bed. Um, and you have TV hookup and entertainment stuff here. 
All right, the the bathroom. This I'll, I'll go through the toilet. I don't know if you, you know, I don't know your level of experience, so I'll assume you that you don't know. I guess it's better to assume that. So you may actually know more than I do. So um, this is the flush pedal. That's residual water in that right now in the system. So um, re residual water pressure. So. The thing is, you can't use this dry. When I talk about dry, I'm talking about the black tank, which is directly below. This goes for all RV toilets. See? Okay, so what you have to do is, after you, after you hook up your power and your water when you get to the campsite, you'll come in here with your chemical, you'll step on the pedal, and you'll let about a gallon or so of water go into the black tank. Right? You have to put water in there when you start off. And then also dump a dose of your chemical in there. So, um... If you don't start off with water and chemical in there, the smell will be overwhelming and the uh, and get clogged up, all kinds of problems. So you always start off with water. And let's say you were going to stay at the campground for another week, but you had to dump your black tank. You'd come in here and, and repeat the procedure. You put a gallon of water in there and chemical. Okay? All righty. So let's go up to the bathroom up here and just give it a quick look over. Same toilet, the same same rules apply. Always start off with water and chemical. Your uh, sink and shower work like any other sink and shower. Keep in mind that you always want to run the fan with the shower because these trailers are built very tight these days. So you don't want to just uh, um, let you know you don't want to create the climate here for mold or mildew to grow. So you want to vent all the moisture out. GFCI here. All the plugs in the trailer are wired through a GFCI, even the one on the outside. So keep that in mind. You'll have to reset it here. Um, okay. You've got storage underneath the bed, of course. That's your escape window. Um, you've got a backer plate here for a TV and hookups here. Okay. Remember I said if you're going to have a swing out bracket, try to get the one with the lock. Okay. So I think that about covers it. Let me look around and see if I forgot anything. I think I covered it all. Okay, good. All right, so first I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. And second of all, I want to remind you, as always, inspect your roof on a regular basis. Any place you see cat, cat, caulk from the factory, you want to inspect that on the trailer. Um, once in the spring, once in the summer, once in the fall, you can go up there and on the roof or have somebody else go there up there you can walk around on it no problem you're just going to check every place you see lap sealant on the roof you're going to look for crack in your separation these things flex down the road um, I'm not talking about this model trailer I'm talking about every one ever built they're all the same in that sense you have to inspect the roof so um, check the seals and sealant and check your your vent covers and your roofing material and make sure everything's good and tight and if you do that regularly and take care of any problems that arise this thing will be bone dry 20 years from now so okay Thank you very much.